Hello everyone, welcome to another movie review. I just got done seeing the new Marvel film, The Marvels. What is happening to me? Um, of course, the newest entry in the MCU. And um, as many people have been talking about, this movie is looking bad in terms of uh, box office, in terms of the quality of the film. Um, the reviews haven't been that great. The projections haven't been that great. And I'm here to report that, yeah, this movie is bad. Um, not bad in terms of, like, terrible. It's just kind of, like, this movie's really meh, okay? Um, is it the worst movie in the MCU? I don't know. Um, if you guys watch my videos, you know, if you've been a view, viewer for uh, years, you know that uh, my least favorite MCU film is Iron Man 2. Is this movie worse than Iron Man 2? Um, I don't know. I have to really think about it. I'd rather watch Iron Man 2 than this. I know that. Um, so in terms of watchability, you know, or rewatchability, I guess, um, Iron Man 2 is better. Um, my problem with Iron Man 2 has more to do with, like, the behind-the-scenes issues and what the movie could have been, and they screwed over Mickey Rourke, they screwed over Jon Favreau, and, um, I'm not gonna get into it, get into it again, um, I have plenty of videos where I talked about that before. Um, so, this movie, um, like I said, it was just very meh, okay? So, if you've seen the trailers, you know, obviously, it revolves around Captain Marvel, um, uh, Miss Marvel, and, um... Photon, right? That's her name. Uh, Maria Rambo, or Monica Rambo, sorry, um, from WandaVision. And um, of course, she was in the first Captain Marvel as a little girl. And I gotta say, the three of them were good in the movie. Um, Brie Larson, um, I didn't totally love her the first time she played Captain Marvel, you know. Um, I still think the first Captain Marvel is just an okay movie. Like, I never hated it, like a lot of people do. I just think it's okay, it's fine. Um, I, I definitely like that one more than this one. Um, I thought she was a little better in this one, but not by much, to be honest. Um, she still isn't really, to me, like, a great character, you know? Um, Miss Marvel, on the other hand, I loved her. She's definitely the best part of this movie, which a lot of people have been saying that. Um, her show was pretty, you know, decent, too, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy for the actress. I know she's a big MCU fan, and, you know, it's probably a dream come true for her. Um... So, she was great. Of course, Monica was great. Uh, Tiana Paris, I think that's her name, the actress. Um, Nick Fury's in the movie, Samuel L. Jackson. And honestly, he was just kind of there. You know, he didn't necessarily need to be in the movie. Um, and I heard, too, that there was supposed to be some sort of link with Secret Invasion, which, you know, a lot of people didn't like that show. Um, I really liked it up until the end. Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, like a lot of people did. Um but yeah, honestly, I didn't see any real link between this and that. I think he was just kind of saying that. Um, the villain in this movie was not good. Uh, she was very much a Ronan wannabe. Um, I'm a huge fan of Ronan, by the way. I love, I always loved his character. I thought he was, you know, the perfect foil for the Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, in that first movie. Um, <laughs> and man, this girl was a Ronan wannabe, and it did not work. Um, no offense to the actress, I'm sure she's very talented. I just did not like her performance. Maybe it was the writing, you know, maybe it was the direction, whatever. I was not a fan of the character. Um, the movie felt very short. It felt like an hour and a half. You know, it's probably a little longer than that, but it really felt like an hour and a half. Like, it flew by. Um, the chemistry between the three main leads was okay. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was just okay. Like, I thought they were fine together, you know. Um, the action was decent, you know. Um, there's the first action set piece involving the three of them switching places and whatnot. I actually really liked that. I thought the choreography was good and, you know. But to be honest, like, there is no real giant action set piece in this. Like, the, the one in the middle, I guess, is the biggest one, but it's not really that big. I don't know. The action in this movie was just kind of minimal, um, which, you know, is okay, but... I don't know, this movie felt kind of pointless. Um, it did kind of develop, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It did kind of reveal the whole um, the whole dynamic between uh, 
Captain Marvel and Photon because they kind of touched on it in WandaVision where there's some bad blood between her and um, Carol and they kind of reveal in this movie why you know there was bad blood between them and I thought it worked I thought it was decent you know I thought it was a decent um, characterization for both characters um, what was another thing I was going to say oh there's a clever thing in this movie I'll give it credit for that involves the cats. There's more than one cat in this movie. You know, you have Goose, the Flurkin. There's several cats in this movie. And the movie does very something very clever with the cats. You'll know what it is when you see it. I thought that was pretty creative. I actually really enjoyed that part. Um, but yeah, um, basically the villain in this film wants revenge against Captain Marvel for basically dooming her home planet. You find out a little backstory, something that happened between her and Captain Marvel. And she basically is trying to steal resources from other, you know, um, she's a Kree, you know, a Ronan wannabe, and she's stealing resources from scrolls and other planets to rebuild her home, essentially. And the way things resolve at the end of the movie, it kind of makes the whole movie pointless. It's like, you couldn't have did this, I don't want to spoil it, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm sure people don't care, to be honest, the way this movie's projected to lose money. Um... <laughs> But the way the main plot resolves, it, it could have been solved way easier. Um, I'll talk about it at the spoiler section at the end of the review. The way the movie ends is cool, though. I really like the ending, you know. Um, wasn't seeing that coming. I'm sure, you know, what it is setting up, though, I, I, I'm sure I saw that coming, but I didn't think it would happen in this movie is what I'm trying to say. Um, I thought it was really cool. And there is one mid credit scene, which is very, very interesting. Um, there's no end credit scene, so don't stay till the very end. It's just one mid credit scene. Um, but yeah, other than that, I honestly don't have a lot to say. This movie, it, it's either the second worst MCU movie or the worst MCU movie. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know. I could rewatch Iron Man 2 and actually have nostalgia for it, you know? Um, that's probably why I'd probably lean more towards Iron Man 2 being better at this point. Um, this movie, I don't really see myself re-watching it. I'm, I mean, I'm going to buy it, you know, as part of the collection when it comes out on um, 4K Blu-ray. But other than that, I mean, it was just, eh. It was so, eh, you know. It's kind of like the Game of Thrones finale. I watched that. I didn't hate it like a lot of people did, but it was just so meh to me. Like, just so meh. That's what this was, okay? Um, yeah, so... Anyways, that's really about it. Um, as a rating... Um, either a 5.5 or, like, a 6 out of 10. And, you know, I gave Morbius, like, a 7, which is still controversial, I think. Um <laughs> <sighs> is this worse than Morbius? I don't know. I never rewatched Morbius. Um, I don't know. I'm probably going to give this one like a six and a half, to be honest. Um, not a six and a half. Sorry, I meant a six. I'll give this one a six. This movie's a six out of ten. You know, so for, for some people that's probably like a higher score, but to me that's like a, that's a D. So a six out of ten for me. Um, anyways, if you haven't seen the film, please leave the review. I'm going to talk spoilers. It's not going to be that long, probably. So, uh, just leave the video. All right, spoiler time. So, um, apparently Carol can just fly into a dying sun and revive it and not be killed. She's that powerful. She can literally go into a sun and not die. Okay, whatever. But what I'm trying to say is they could have resolved that in the movie. Instead of this girl going around killing planets and fighting everybody and, you know, Carol could have did this from the beginning, like, all it took was that line of dialogue. Hey, Carol, you know you could just fly into the sun and revive it. And, you know, I don't know. This movie, <laughs> what was that about? I don't know. That was weird. Maybe I missed something. I don't know. All right, the mid credit scene. Um, Hank McCoy, the Beast, played by Kelsey Grammer, which I really love to see. He's the best part of um, X-Men The Last Stand. So now we're getting into the X-Men, it looks like. So, and, of course, Kamala Khan is a mutant, technically. So, they've been planting seeds, obviously. We got the Charles Xavier and um, Doctor Strange 2, and, you know. So, it's cool that we're actually... We actually got to see the X door, you know, the door with the X symbol on it in the background. I don't know if you guys saw that. That was really cool. And, um, of course, it looks like uh, Maria Rambeau, the mother, is actually going to be an X-Men. 
in this whatever reality this is you know I don't know if it's the Fox X-Men reality or whatever I have no idea um, so it's very cool that we got to see that and Kelsey Grammer again he showed up in Days of Future Past as a nice little cameo at the end which I really like that um, but we never really got to see anything else so hopefully he gets to stay as Beast for a good while I know he's kind of up there in age but you know it looks like he's gonna be Beast so that's pretty cool um, and then the way the movie ended, of course, with Kate Bishop was awesome. I love that. You know, whatever you want to say about the Hawkeye series, she was fantastic. Haley Steinfeld is very talented. I loved her character. And to see her show up at the end with Lucky, the dog, was really, <laughs> that was really cool. Did not expect that. So, of course, they're being part of the Young Avengers, which everybody predicted. Um, so, yeah, very excited about that. But uh, that's really about it in terms of spoilers. Of course, the cats um, swallowing everybody was very clever, I thought. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but how does that work? You know what I mean? Without killing these people, like, how do you shrink somebody down to the size of a cat's stomach and then, like, they come out perfectly fine? Like, how does that work? You know what I mean? Whatever. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that's really about it. So let me know your thoughts of the film in the comments. And, uh, yeah, is this the worst MCU movie, in your opinion, you know? I'll update my ranking on Letterboxd, you know. It's probably just going to be right above Iron Man 2. Um, yeah, so. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and have a good one. Bye-bye.